Hey YouTube, it's Christian with Tech Stock Repair. Uh, today you're looking at the back of a Samsung Sync Master 2493HM LCD monitor. Uh, picked this thing up. It's got a problem. It does not power on. Um, I'm assuming that it's probably a uh, power supply issue. Uh, pop, pop the back off this thing to take a look. Um, taking the back off is pretty easy. Basically, there's two steps to taking it off. Uh, you have your rear back panel cover and this thing basically snaps into place and if you see down here across the bottom there's four screws that hold this in so relatively simple you have your stand here and you have four screws that hold the stand in here 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 and here you loosen those screws up you raise this at an angle and pull it out because it does have some tabs in there that keep it in place. Throw that off to the side. You take out your screws on the bottom. One, two, three, four. That bottom will lift up a little bit. But what you got to do at this point, you'll have to get between the bezel there. You'll see that all the way around. Um, use like a small screwdriver. And basically you can just push in all the way across here and you'll hear it snapping as you push in like so and that's basically pushing those tabs back once you get one side up the rest of it starts to come pretty easy So I got that side done there. This bottom side is done because the screws are out. So I kind of do the same thing along the left side here. Then across the top. At the same time kind of keeping pressure applied upward on the rear panel. And keep those snaps from coming back in. Like that. Don't be afraid to break anything. If you have this problem, then your monitor's already broke, so don't have to worry about it too much. We got it open. You see, here's a heat shield. You got your inverter board. Um, then behind here, you're going to have your your main board and your power supply. So I'm assuming that's probably a power supply issue. Um, you'll notice that when you open this up. The weird thing is, there's actually no screws holding this all together. It just, uh, I guess it's held in by the pressure of the back panel uh, being clipped into the front bezel and screwed into the front bezel. Uh, you go across here. The first thing you want to do is probably take out these supplies for the uh, inverter board. Pinch them and pull. Pretty simple. If you've seen my video on the Emerson 32-inch uh, LCD, very, very similar. Uh, internals. Pull that out. Pull that out. So those are all out. Uh, then you have your front panel and audio hookups over here on the right side. You're going to pull those out. Uh, then you have your power supply to your inverter board. Actually, you know what? You can leave that in because this all, if you see here now, this all is going to come up as one unit. If I can get, you see that? So at this point, the only thing you really need to take out to get this off and to another location to work on it is this uh, cable run into the LCD slave. So, let's see how good I am here. <laughs> This is probably, I'm holding with one hand and pulling this out with the other. You'll see these, these clips here. You need to pop those out. And then you can get a small screwdriver. Sorry about the non-focus. And kind of pry that out ever so slightly. You gotta be careful. You wanna make sure those clips are fully disengaged. And it's out. Then you can take this thing 
to another location. And there you go. You have your main board here, which obviously everything's facing the opposite way. And then you have your inverter board here. Hang tight just a second and we'll pop that open. Okay, so here basically you're going to, to get the uh, power supply out, you're going to have two power connections, one right here and one right here. You basically, you grab, and there's a little uh, pinch side to it, I guess you could say, and grab it and pinch it and pull it straight out. There's one. And you could feel it up underneath there. You can grab it and give it a pinch. There's two. So these two are out. Um, don't, you don't need to worry about marking any cables or anything. These are all different sizes, so it's not like you're going to get anything mixed up. Uh, then you have a screw there, a screw there, a screw here, and a screw here. Also, you have a retaining clip that's underneath this tape here that you need to pull this tape up. So you see this retaining clip here. So we're going to unscrew those. There it is, and here's the clip that I talked about. It's like off to the side. Now this should pull straight up. Oh, yep, and now you have your you have the cord from your uh, inverter board over here. So probably not a bad idea to go ahead and get that pulled out ahead of time, because then you can just pull that cord all the way through. But since I'm kind of already gotten halfway through this thing. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out on this side here ever so slightly. <sighs> Come on now. There we go. Um, you can see this is pretty dusty on both sides. I think this came from a, um, a heavy smoker's house uh, and they also had pets which is killer for these boards what can happen is if you can see some of these this dust is kind of collecting and bridging over to other components on the board and vice versa on the back it's all the leads they have dust going across them and bridging the gap so it can cause some issues there um, you know best thing to do is get this cleaned out I'm gonna go ahead and blow all this out but as you can see here you can already see, if I can get it to focus in, we have a 2200 UF 10 volt capacitor that is bulged and uh, leaking some fluid out the top. So we're going to go ahead and um, pull that off. Looks like there's a heat shield or something like that on this side. Let me grab a pair of needle nose real quick. Well, I just went ahead and bent that heat shield back. Um, you can see right here is your bag capacitor. And, right here and here are your two leads. So, I got my soldering uh, gun ready to go. I'm going to pop those out, and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I got that pulled out uh, relatively simple. Here's the only one. I just flip it over, find your two leads that are right here, and just kind of go back, you know, heat each one of those up and kind of pull at the same time until it comes out. Now the board marks it, your negative side is facing towards the right, um, so you want your negative, your new one, the negative side facing towards the right as you put it back in. Um, like I said before, this is a 2200 UF. Uh, 10 volt capacitor. All I have really is a uh, 2200 16 volt 
but uh, you can go up on the volts, that's fine, you just can't go up on the US. Uh, 105 degrees Celsius. You don't want any of the uh, low temp ones, uh, you can find them out there, I think they're like 78 degrees or whatever, there's a big difference. So I'm going to pop this one in and we'll see if that fixes the problem. Hang tight guys. Okay guys, I got the new capacitor uh, in place. It's a little taller than the old one. I think it should work. Should be fine. We'll see. Um, I'm going to pop everything back together. As you can see, I went ahead and blew all the dust off and cleaned it up. I mean, it's something that's a must do. Uh, you don't want any dust collected on any of this stuff. Not in excess anyway. So I'm going to pop, uh, put this all back together and power it on and see what happens. Stay tuned. Alright guys, I got it all put back together. I'm going to flip the switch in the back. And the blue light comes on. And there it is. Boom. Just like that. Pretty easy, quick, straightforward fix. Um, pretty much anybody can do it. I mean, if you can figure out how to use a soldering gun, then you're pretty much good to go. Uh, they're very simple to take apart. A lot easier than uh, other things that I've had to take apart. Um, tell me what you guys think. Let me know if this helped you out. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.